there's double trouble in the Polish household. <laughs> Two-year-old Berkeley and four-year-old Zeppelin are running amok, and their owners are in way over their heads. There's your chaos. The dogs are under house arrest. Go lay down now, go. And the yard is an unimaginable mess. I can't imagine all of America is going to their backyard to pick up after their dogs. Good grief. These owners need to step up. It's absolutely disgusting. You should not have dogs. But when the going gets tough. I think there's something here that you're not being truthful about with me. This is freaking ridiculous, OK? The tough don't always get going. Right, I'm not doing this anymore. Victoria Stillwell has been training dogs in Great Britain and the USA for nearly 14 years. Today, she's on her way to meet the Polish family and their two disruptive Dobermans. Being a responsible dog owner means more than simply giving your dog enough to eat and drink. Dogs need a mentally stimulating and physically engaging environment, and if those needs aren't met, a dog can become depressed, neurotic, and extremely difficult to control. Living in this house is complete and utter chaos. Go lay down now, Berkeley. No! Berkeley is very, very destructive. She chews everything that she can get her hands on. Socks, napkins, couches. She can't be left alone for a split second. Our mom gets stressed out because the dogs don't listen. Let go. And neither do we. <laughs> do not do that. Ah! Barbara thought it was important for Samson and Jordan to have a dog growing up. But Samson and Jordan can't walk the dogs right now because the dogs are as big as they are and a lot stronger. So it's Barbara's primary responsibility to take care of the dogs. And that presents a tremendous challenge for her because they don't really listen to her. If the dogs were better behaved, I think the stress level in this house would go way down. Before Victoria can help, she needs to observe the dog's issues for herself. I can hear dogs. Yes. I don't see any. Well, we have them locked up so that they're not ripping Ooh. the house apart. Oh. The moment Jack said that the dogs were locked up, alarm bells went off in my head. Can I meet them? Sure. OK. Yes, we can let up. It's understandable if these dogs were going to be aggressive to keep them behind the glass doors. Yeah, oh, come on out. Hi. They weren't aggressive at all. They were gorgeous. Gosh. This is Zepp. Zepp. And that's Berkeley. And that's Berkeley. OK. Right. So tell me then about why they're put in that room. They don't listen. So once they start off in some part of the house, uh, you can't get them back down. They grab laundry, napkins, napkins if they're on the table. They'll go into the garbage. He didn't have any of those habits before she came. So he's learned from her. Yes. Barbara is terrified that if we let Berkeley into any other part of the house, that she's going to do significant damage. So after only a few moments of freedom, Barbara wants both dogs back under lockdown. Berkeley, Berkeley. But it's easier said than done. I can see why. Berkeley, Berkeley, Berkeley. Berkeley didn't want to go back into that den, and it was clear she didn't want to listen to Barbara at all. In. Oh, I better get in. I better get in quickly. Da. Why can't you have them more in the house with you? Do you see the door? I see the door. <laughs> and that would be through the through the house. I mean, they've eaten the wood off chairs. They've eaten rugs, hats, beds, the couch. I mean, that was a custom made couch that we had. If they're not supervised and watched, there's no telling what they'll do. OK, so tell me, how long do they spend in this room? Maybe six hours. Dobermans are big, powerful breeds, and the chewing is getting out of control. So I know that Berkeley and Zeppelin aren't getting enough exercise. Do you have a stronger relationship with one of the dogs over the other? I would say I have a little bit of a stronger relationship with Zeppelin over Berkeley. Berkeley, Berkeley. Berkeley. She's my stress every day. She's just a third child. She's as stubborn as can be. I mean, that's just her personality. She's just so strong-willed. The dogs are left in the den for about six hours a day, but I suspect from the amount of chewing that's been going on that it's much more than that. If Victoria thinks the damage inside the house is bad, it's nothing compared to what the dogs have done in the backyard. 
When I walked down the steps of the backyard, I saw the filthiest, most disgusting yard I've ever seen. There was poop everywhere. What disgusts me is that those dogs are running around in that backyard. They're obviously stepping in the poop and then they're bringing it inside. Do your kids come and play out here? No, front yard. Whose job is it to clear the yard from poop? Primarily mine. You haven't been doing a good <laughs> job, have you? I can't imagine all of America is going to their backyard to pick up after their dogs. I'd be shocked. I guess we didn't really think that much about it. It's just kind of a little out of control at the moment. It's way out of control. This is a backyard of people that don't know the first thing about owning a dog. Who walks them? How many times a day do they get walked? The walk primarily is out to use the restroom, so we'll maybe go up the street a little bit, and it'll be me. So they don't get an actual walk? No, not so much. What about you? Do you walk them? I don't walk them. They're too strong for me to walk. They're too strong. I've definitely been in this backyard enough time. Thank you. I get the picture. Back inside, Victoria gets to meet the other half of the Polish family. Hi, Zeki. Hi, Berkeley. The twins came back from school, full of energy, let the dogs out of the room, and the whole energy in the house changed. Samson? Jordan. Jordan, nice to meet you. Do you have a dog? I do, Sadie, chocolate Labrador. Did you train her? Did I train her? Yes, I did. Are dad gonna do most of the training? You're gonna be doing some. But our dad's gonna do most of it? We're gonna be doing a lot of it. <laughs> when are you gonna finish training? That's a lot of questions. The boys were really enthusiastic. They had a ton of questions, they had a lot of energy, and they loved their dogs. Can you ever walk them? No. And why not? Because they're too strong. Would you like to be able to walk them? Yes. The boys really want to walk their dogs, and I want them to be able to walk their dogs, but they've got to do so safely. All right, slow, come here. Currently, Jack is the only person who attempts to take the dogs out. All right. Wow. I'm not sure it's ever going to be possible to walk these dogs because they have minds of their own, and they seem to want to go in opposite directions. Wow. They're strong. The dogs were so bad at walking. Jack spent most of the walk straining against the dogs just to keep himself upright. <laughs> oh, wow. Have you ever had uh, any training? Have you ever taught them how to walk or anything? No, not, not no, these guys. No. If Samson and Jordan were to walk them, I mean, they would just be pulled over, wouldn't they? They each weigh more than Samson and Jordan, and they're a lot stronger. So one pull like that, and they're going to be skipping along the pavement behind them. Do you think Barbara would like to be able to walk them? Oh, absolutely. Obviously, with her back injury, that this would just exacerbate that, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. And make it worse. I've seen enough of that. We can okay. turn around. Come on, this way. Zap, come on. The dogs never get walked. The only time they come out of the front of the house is to toilet. So when they do go out for a walk, they are so incredibly overstimulated by every little sight every little sound. The family seems to be completely out of touch. I have big doubts that Jack and Barbara really understand what their dogs need. Coming up. You don't have any relationship with her whatsoever. Victoria doesn't pull any punches. Do you think you stimulate your dog's mind? Uh, probably not. I mean, I, but no. I, I... Victoria has seen how the Polish family are keeping their dogs prisoners in their home. Well, lay down now, go. Now it's time for Jack and Barbara to get a reality check. Now, Barbara, throughout the day here, you're here with the dogs. You said that they spend about four hours in that room in the morning and about a couple of hours at the den in the afternoon. And as soon as Berkeley's out here, you're like, you're on her like a wall, because of course you're worried she's gonna choose something. Your stress level goes right up. You don't have any relationship with her whatsoever. She doesn't listen to you. You, you, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think she, you really exist for her. And these dogs aren't being walked. I understand, Barbara, it's very difficult for you because of your, your, your back problem. But I think that a lot of the things that are going on in the house are not because of the dogs, they're because of you. I think there's something here that you're not being truthful about with me. Here we go. Attack me. It seems like those dogs spend a lot longer in that den than just six hours a day. The boys leave for school at 7.30. Right. And they come home at 2.30, so they're, they're, I mean, they're out by 2.30. Right. So, I mean, do the math. They're usually and they never go for, back in that den. No, they're back and forth. In a typical day, the dogs could spend up to 
eight hours in that room. Here's what I don't think you're giving them. Is there a lot of positive interaction with these dogs? I mean, I sit and hang out. I mean, I, oh, I, positive interaction as far as... I mean, is there any mental stimulation? Is there any training them? Is there any getting them to do things, to work? What do you mean by work? Have you stimulated their minds at all? Do you think, as an owner, that you stimulate your dog's mind? I, probably not. I mean, I... But no. I Every dog, doesn't matter if they are laid back, needs that important mental stimulation. Because if you think about it, dog's senses are immeasurably superior to ours. But they live in a very sensory deprived environment in our domestic homes. Dogs will take out all of their frustration, anxiety and boredom on things. The only way you get a dog to stop chewing is to give them more outlets in the day so they don't need to chew. The backyard, you've got a great big backyard here, but I have to say, it is the most revolting backyard I've ever seen. That poop, I mean, I've seen a lot of backyards with poop, but that has, this, this takes the prize of being the worst poopy backyard I've ever seen in my whole life. And why is that? Why is that poop not being cleared up? Um. I guess it's, you know, the only, the only, uh, uh, the dogs go back there. That's it. Um, I guess it's... Your dog's feet are going to be fecally contaminated because I saw them stepping in the poop. You can't, you can't not. When they're running around, they're stepping in poop. And you probably don't know it, but you probably have fecal contamination all on your floors. So it's more than just, no, we don't clear up. We never go out there, so why clear up? It's the fact that it's actually bad for your health, not to mention the dog's health. Do you have time to go out and, and pick that poop up? I mean, once we get it cleaned up, yeah, I don't, I don't mind. Or having, I mean, with having someone come and clean it, I'm sure. If, you know, if I can't stay on top of it. Okay. Well, we have a lot to do. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get to it. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be happening, picking up the poop. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what, uh, we'll see what, what goes on. There's people that can do that. So why do something others can do? Before the training begins, it's time for cleanup. Absolutely repulsive. My plan was to work with the family to clean up the backyard so that it would be a safer environment for the dogs and we could get it done quickly. But Jack and Barbara flatly refused to clean up their own backyard, so I'm going to do it. It's vital that it's clean. They're doing such a disservice to their dogs by not doing this. It's absolutely disgusting. They should not have dogs. Part of being a responsible dog owner is doing things that aren't so pleasant, like picking up your dog's poop. Hey guys, can hey, we wait. help? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Halfway through my backyard cleanup, yeah. the kids came down and asked if they could help. What a relief. All right, because I want this backyard spotless. Yeah, so that you guys can play in it and also you can train your dogs in it. Keep going guys, because there's a lot of it. It was fun cleaning up the poop because we got to use little claws and we got to put it in a basket and there was lots of poop. <laughs> the boys and I filled two massive trash bags full of poop. I think there probably were about 40 pounds of weight of poop. But thank you for helping. Okay. With the dirty work done, Victoria can start the training, and her first priority is building a better relationship between Barbara and Berkeley. I want Berkeley to listen to you more. I want to teach her to focus on you when you ask. And I do this by putting the treat in front of the dog's nose and putting it up to my eyes. Watch me. When I get that focus, I give the, the dog a treat. Watch me. Good girl. And I don't want her focus to be on this hand. I want her focus to go from my hand to my eyes, even if it's just fleeting. Good. Did you see that her eyes go from the treat to my eyes? If you take her, get a few treats. You just put it in front of her nose, put it up, and really watch her eyes. Okay. Now, I don't want her 
so I don't want her going mm, edit. Berkeley was not confident in looking at Barbara. She didn't want to make a connection. And that's because Berkeley's not used to making a connection with Barbara. In fact, the only interaction that Berkeley has with Barbara is mostly being told off. She'll so do focus for me. Good girl. Try going like that. Watch me. Good. Try being a bit more animated. See if she, she does it then. Berkeley. Put, put, it, put it up. Show that you've got it. Berkeley. Put it up to your eyes. Berkeley. Berkeley. Stand up so that you're not... Berkeley. Just wait. Don't call her name. Just wait for it. Wow. Even I have to say, wow. It's clear to me doing this training with Berkeley and Barbara that there is a huge, huge chasm between the two, a massive disconnect. And I really need to repair that relationship if any of this training is going to work. Coming up. Ask her for a sit again. Barbara and Berkeley face off. Berkeley. Oh, well, don't keep doing that to okay. her. Berkeley has formed such a habit of ignoring Barbara at home. Even I have to say, wow. That Victoria wants to start from square one with focus work at a neutral training Look center. At this place. Berkeley's focus on Barbara is terrible. And the only way to get that focus better is to train not just in the home, but in other environments as well. I'd like you just to ask her for a simple SIT. The hand signal is like you're holding a treat in these two. Sometimes you are, sometimes you're not. Okay. You lift your wrist like this. Sit. Good girl. Okay, so ask her for ask her for a sit. Berkeley. Okay. When you're gonna give the hand signal, don't keep doing that to okay. her. Because that teaches her that the hand signal is not just that, but the hand signal's that. Okay. Good. Tell a good girl. Good girl. Beautiful. I'd like you this time to use a treat, put it up, and get her to watch you. Berkeley. Berkeley is paying a lot more attention to her because she's paying a lot more attention to Berkeley. And it's positive attention, not negative attention. The more you can make your dog feel good, the more you can mark that good behavior, the more your dog's going to come to you in every situation. It feels great having a relationship built with her. I still have a little bit of ways to go, but it isn't, it's definitely improving. Now, Victoria also needs to address Jack's connection with Berkeley and give her some much needed leash training. Jack has never taught the dogs to walk on a leash, so consequently, walking is a nightmare. I want to teach Jack ways that he can teach Berkeley how to walk on a leash and then use that to teach Zeppelin. The reason why I like this room is because it does have this long wall. And actually, when you're teaching a dog to heal, um, it's good to have a wall on the other side so that the dog can't veer off. The dog learns to be close to you. Victoria also adds a hand signal to the command. Heel. Good girl. I like to use a vocal heel cue, but also to slap my thigh, which is a hand signal the dog has to walk close to me. Heel. Good girl. Heel. Good girl. Very good. Yes. OK, so I'd like you to do that. Go for it. Come on, girl. Say heel to her when she comes up to your heel. As you turn, you say, let's go. And as you're walking in the, di in the direction you want to go to, that's when you slap your thigh and say heel. Good girl. Keep to the wall. Keep closer to the wall. Good girl. There. Good girl. Good. Jack is doing really well. Good girl. But suddenly, let's go. Berkeley appears to have had enough. Let's go. Don't pull her. Want to go? Now wait until she makes her decision. Dogs really learn when they can really make decisions for themselves. And when they make the right one, they get praised by their owner. This encourages a dog to keep making right decisions. Good girl. Good girl. I think Berkeley has responded very well to the tools that Victoria showed me as far as walking her. Um, she's really starting to pay attention to me. And I really like that. I really like the connection you're making now with her. Berkeley really began to respond to Jack. And that's so important because 
If Berkeley gets more of what she needs, I think it's also going to really translate to Zeppelin. I still think it's going to be tough for you on a walk. I think it's going to take a while, but you've got it. Back at home, the boys are eager to hear how they can get involved. Your father's going to be leash training the dogs. That means he's going to be training them to walk just without pulling on a regular leash and a regular collar. But the dogs need to get out and get exercise, even when he's at work. And I want you boys to be able to do it with your mother. We're excited to be walking the dogs because we've never walked them in a long time. I'm going to give you these two harnesses. And these are special kind of harnesses we're going to put on the dogs. And these harnesses lead the dogs by the chest and not by the neck, so that when the dogs try and pull, their bodies are just brought round. There's no pain involved, there's no discomfort. Let's go. If I was walking them just with the collars on, they would pull me over, no doubt about it. Now, Barbara, as we walk, could you take the leash of Zeppelin's leash? OK. I didn't really plan on walking the dogs. It kind of threw me for a surprise. Let's go, Zeppelin. And let's use a bit of energy to get him, because if, if you go, he's going to go. Good, good. That's it. Barbara is really anxious because she has a lot of back problems. And this is one of the first times, really, since the dogs were puppies that she's walked them. OK, let's use your energy. Come on, say, Zeppi, let's Zeppi. go. Let's go. Let's go, Zeppelin. Let's go. Good boy. Barbara, how does that feel to you? It feels good. He's pulling a little bit. He's kind of a little excited. Much better than him before. Zepp was a little apprehensive. He was stopping a little bit and hearing a couple of noises. Come on. Good. But for the most part, I think I did OK. Since the dogs are doing so well, Victoria lets the twins take over, but under her close supervision. You think he's pulling in his too much? Just tell me. I mean. Sammy, that's really good. How do you feel walking Zeppelin now? Is that OK for you? Yes. Yeah? You feel confident? All right. But while Zeppelin's easy to handle, Berkeley is proving more difficult. Berkeley! OK, let me take a few second. I had to take Berkeley back from the boys and walk her myself because she was far too strong for them, even with the harness on. So if they've got even a chance of walking her, I have to come up with something else. Coming up, Victoria tries a new approach to get Berkeley out of the house. But can Barbara get it right? Get the booty right there. I will. I'm just, is that right or not right? Victoria has been encouraging Barbara and her boys to take their Dobermans on regular walks. But Berkeley's powerful pulling has put their outdoor excursions on hold. OK, let me take a few second. So Victoria has come up with a new solution. OK, boys, we have discovered that Zeppelin is good with the harness. But I still don't think that you're going to be able to walk Berkeley on that harness because she's still pulling too much. We're going to use this, which is rather like when you put a halter on a horse. Really, with these things, you can walk a dog just with one finger. The reason why I only like to use head collars as a last resort is because some dogs are very stressed out when they have head collars around their faces. I want her to get used to feeling this around her face. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm holding it here holding it on the other side, so she has to put her nose through the loop. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach this bit behind her head so she feels what it's like. Now, Barbara takes over. Put a treat on the other side of it, so she puts her nose through it to get the treat. Put the treat there, hold it with one hand, and as she okay. puts her nose through it, Okay. Hold it like this. Barbara's very awkward in all of her dealings with the dogs, and when it comes to putting on something like the head collar or following a simple direction, she finds it difficult. So you're holding the loop with one hand, okay. and you're holding it this with okay. the other, OK? Get the body right. I will. I'm just. Good. Beautiful. I was having a little trouble. I didn't realize to hold it in one hand and put the food through with the other hand. But it was pretty simple once I got the hang of it. Walk up and down here. Just see and, and ask her to let go to come with you, OK? Done. Now she's looking at you. Good. Berkeley. Good. So if you come back here. Berkeley, let's go. OK, good. Berkeley, let's go. Nice. Very nice. OK, lovely, Barbara. Berkeley. You can see already she she went she went like that. Oof. And this is very normal for a dog trying to get it off. 
but then get her attention. Berkeley, Berkeley, Berkeley. You, you distract her from doing that. And then you say, good girl. There, nice, nice. I think the head color is really going to help Barbara's confidence about communicating with her dog so that Berkeley's not shut up in the den all day. The most important thing about you and the boys walking these dogs is I know they are big, powerful dogs, very, very strong. I want them to be able to get outside and I want to keep you guys safe. Because believe you me, their behavior is going to be much less crazy in the house if they get to go out a lot. All right? Good, we'll see. Now that Barbara has a little more control, Victoria wants the twins to get involved as well. So boys, the reason why I wanted to clean out the backyard is so that you guys can come here, but also I want to give Berkeley a little bit of fun. I had hidden two fake ducks in my jacket. Berkeley likes toys. She likes to carry things in her mouth. And I thought that she could play a game with the boys. It'd be something that she could enjoy and the boys could enjoy. Now, I want you to squeak it a little bit. Okay, now we got her interest. Go so she can see you hide it behind that hedge right up there. Yeah, okay, so she can see it, good. Perfect, come back here. Now, I'm gonna release her and I'm gonna say, go find, okay? Go find, go find, good girl. Let's see if she can find it. Do you think she can? Good girl, Woo good girl, yay! Perfect, good girl. Playing with the ducks in the backyard with Berkeley is gonna be really mentally stimulating for her, as well as giving her good physical exercise, plus it's positive interaction between her and the boys. Okay, now, go hide it where you want. Stay, Berkeley. Yeah, let's see here. Stay. Okay, now, you're gonna be releasing her, and tell her, give her the command. Go find. Did she find it? She got it. Yes, tell her, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. The tracking duck game was fun because it was kind of cool to see her do that. Did you know Dobermans are very visual? So we're really allowing her to use her Doberman senses, which is so important for her. The boys had such a good time. The training went so well that I really hope they continue it. It's essential for Berkeley. Lovely. OK, I think she did really well. Let's go. Victoria has laid the foundation for good communication between Berkeley and the family. Now it's time for her to leave them to continue alone. All right, so guys, I'm gonna leave you for a while. You have work to do, there's no doubt about it. I want these dogs to spend less time in the den and more time with you. I guarantee you 100% the chewing will not stop unless you take these dogs out more, give them physical exercise and mental stimulation. Obviously, you, Jack, you're gonna be walking the dogs twice a day if possible. Right. It's a little overwhelming, everything that she gave me to do, but I think once I get it all down pat, I should be fine. Work diligently and good luck, and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. bye, guys. Bye. To get the family to invest time and positive energy into these dogs is, has been a struggle. I don't know whether they can keep it up. <laughs> We're in trouble. I really hope they find it within themselves to become more responsible owners, because if they don't, the dogs aren't going to make progress, and in fact, they're going to suffer. Coming up, the battle is on between Barbara and Berkeley. Come on. Come on, come on. But will Barbara give up the fight? I'm done. This is, this is freaking ridiculous, OK? Yay! Victoria Stilwell has left the Polish family for a few days, hoping they will now be able to integrate their dogs into their family. Bye, guys. Bye. So far, Jack has been keeping up his end of the bargain, getting the dogs out on walks twice a day. Good girl. And he's already seeing a huge improvement. Good girl. Berkeley's definitely made real progress on the leash training. It makes me happy when I see Berkeley uh, walking, you know, next to my side or not pulling me down the street. Berkeley, good job. Good girl. Not only that, the dogs are spending more time outside of their den and enjoying time with the boys in the newly cleaned yard. Good girl. Good girl. And that's helped reduce the chewing problems when they are in the house. 
Berkeley and Zeppelin are happier now because we are paying more attention to them. They're even spending quality time with Barbara as well. The dogs will definitely be out of the den more. I mean, I spend time with them in the house now. Barbara has also been working with Berkeley on focus training to continue building sit. their bond. Berkeley, sit. Sit. Good girl. But despite their progress, Jack and Barbara are still reluctant to get their hands dirty in the backyard. So they brought in someone else to take over. Because of our busy schedule, the solution that works for us as far as keeping the backyard clean was we found a service to do it weekly. I could tell you that I guess Barbara and I had never really thought about the health issues presented by not keeping the backyard as clean as maybe we could. Later in the week, Victoria checks in. I'm eager to see how Jack, Barbara, and the kids have been doing while I've been away. Today, Barbara is facing her fears and allowing the boys okay. to take Zeppelin out for a walk. Come on, Zepp. You ready? Come on, Zeppi. Wait, no, let's just get to the street. The twins may be excited, but Zeppelin is less enthusiastic. Zeppi, come on. Good boy. Come on, Zeppi. Zeppi, come on. Barbara is certainly not a natural leader. She's far too tentative. Come on, Zeppi. Move on the side that you're pulling. I know. Come on. <laughs> Zeppi, come on. You're not going to make him run. We're going to go slow. And it's not long before Zeppelin decides he's had enough. Sam, yeah, let's take him home because I don't think he's in that very good. Oh, okay. Well, let me take him. Let me let me take him. No. Zeppi, let's go. Come on. Zeppi. Let's go. It's clear that Barbara's trying, but she's so unconfident. And Zeppelin just doesn't want to listen to her. Hold the leash. Hold the leash. Okay, I'm taking this off. Just let him run home. No. Because this is ridiculous. This is not working. He's not going to... No, he's going to pull! If he runs away, it's on your head. With Zeppelin refusing to budge, Barbara gives up and calls on Jack to bail them out. So the three of them, uh, with Zepp, were basically stuck on an island. So it was daddy to the rescue. Give me a scare. No, here, give me the leash. Him. Just give me the leash. Come on, buddy. You ready? Come on, let's go in. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Despite one unsuccessful outing, Barbara soldiers on with the training, this time with Berkeley. We are going to figure this out. Good girl. Here you go. Berkeley, 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 Berkeley. Come on. It looks like Barbara's having real trouble fitting that head collar, and that is not a good sign. Good girl. Good girl. With the head collar finally in place, they head to the backyard. Let's go, Berkeley, let's go. Come on. But they don't get far before Barbara realizes something's amiss. All right, she's not moving, so. What is she doing? The leash is attached to the wrong collar. Come on. Good girl. But Barbara carries on regardless. Berkeley, come on. Hey, come on. Berkeley. What is she doing? Berkeley. When I have Berkeley out in the backyard with the head collar on, I can't really seem to get her motivated to walk. That's very frustrating. Wanna go? This way? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Unable to get Berkeley to listen. I'm done. Barbara loses her patience, and once again, she completely abandons the training. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. What a mess. Barbara needs to be so much more confident, more assertive if any of these trainings are going to work. This is freaking ridiculous, OK? I'm going to go upstairs where Jack is, and you guys can have the free run of the house. I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. Barbara, you are never going to be a leader to these dogs unless you calm down. I'm on my way back. Victoria Stilwell is returning to the Polish family, where she hopes to get Barbara. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Back on board with the training. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you guys? Good. When Victoria walked back in the door, I knew she probably wanted to go over a couple things with me. I saw the difficulty on the walk with the harness. Come on. He doesn't want to go. Oh. It was raining. There was a school bus coming. There was a lot going so on. And he just, too much and the kids were all over the, and then yeah. 
he just started shaking. But you're gonna have to deal with that situation. I wanna work on you being more confident with the dogs in your house. But I just think your patience is wearing thin and you get frustrated. And so we're gonna do stuff with the dogs today that's gonna make you even more confident. I know you had trouble with, with the, the head collar. She's stuck on this hook. They are com complex to put on. We're, we'll just go over that again so you're completely confident with putting it on. I just wanted to work with Barbara on this because she's with the dogs for most of the day. If I can have a breakthrough with Barbara, I believe that everything's gonna be easier for the whole family. First, Victoria lays to rest the confusion over the head collar. This is where this attaches to. Last time you had it attached actually to the collar. That's it, perfect. Now, Victoria wants to help Barbara take more leadership over the dogs, starting with the door to the den. Everything that I'm gonna do is gonna be concentrated inside. Inside, really around the house, is where Barbara needs the help. So this is what we do. The whole premise of this training is that the dogs are not allowed out of the door until they're calm. Okay, up. Uh, wait. I use the wait cue with the dogs. It's basically teaching the dogs impulse control. Wait. Wait. Now it's Barbara's turn. Berkeley, come on. Beautiful. The new me is not gonna, I'm not gonna let Berkeley get away with as much and I'm gonna be firm. With the dog spending less time in the den, Victoria also wants Barbara to have control throughout the house. You need to have a very level tone of voice. You need to be extremely patient. One of your traits is you give up easily. If things become too much, you're just like, oh, I can't do it. And if we have to work on this for one hour, we'll do to do it. I'm to do this, Victoria introduces a new command. I'm gonna use a stay. And the stay is different from the wait because wait means that, uh, uh, wait means you just have to wait in one place, but I'm going to release you. Stay means you gotta stay there. Stay. Stay. It wasn't long before both dogs were just staying in one place. I was able to walk around the other part of the kitchen. And I think Barbara was really impressed by what she saw her dogs do. Zeppelin and Berkeley are perfectly behaved for Victoria, but will they do the same for Barbara? All right, so we need to be direct. Give them the cue now, too late. Okay, bring her back. Good, nice, very nice. Give the cue to begin with. Cue them now. Stay, stay. Push her back with your body, body block, not with your hands, with your body. Body blocking is very simple. You don't use your hands. You just put your body in front of the dog's access. Step on back. Back. No, that's the, the back is over there. This... Okay. Barbara's really struggling with the dogs, but I really want to bring her confidence up so she knows how to communicate with both of her dogs. That's it, good. Now tell her, stay strong. Tell her now. Berkeley, stay, stay. She has to be a strong leader and she can't give up. They don't know what you want unless you communicate what you want. With your body strong, as soon as you tell them to go back and they go back, then say stay. Be very deliberate and very strong about it. Cue it, stay. Stay, 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 back, stay. Berkeley back, Good. now walk away. Stay. It took a little time, but Berkeley finally got it, and she realized she wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't gonna let her go. What does it feel like with the dogs listening to you? It feels great. So much, I think, of what's gone on in your house is because there hasn't been leadership. Now you've got a few tools now where you can take control back. Barbara made huge progress throughout this training from a very unconfident person with their dogs. She's now really communicating with them well. They're cooperating with her, and I don't think that's ever happened. I have to say, I think you've made a big journey from when I first came into this house. Barbara, you certainly were very unconfident. And now, your dogs, they were listening to you, and it was really great to see that. I know we've done a lot of work, you've seen the results, and I just want you to take those results and fly with them. I definitely think that this whole experience in training the dogs has brought us as a family closer together because it's given us kind of a common goal, which is great. I feel good about the training that Victoria taught us because I think it'll really help our dogs. Goodbye, see you.
If the family continue to work, dog ownership for them is going to be about being joyful with their dogs, not just thinking their dogs are just huge pains. It's a process, a huge process. This is going to change our life. Since Victoria's left, I can tell that Barbara is more confident uh, when she's interacting with the dogs. Wait. Come on. And I see that she's much closer with Berkeley and really uh, bonding with her like she already had with Zeb. I definitely feel like Berkeley responds to me more now. Watch me. Just calling her, talking to her, she comes over so I can pet her. Good girl, girl Berkeley. I think Berkeley is chewing less. She's just kind of been a little bit wiped out. Samson and Jordan are definitely playing a bigger active role with the dogs. We are having much more fun with the dogs because they listen more. Let's go. Berkeley, let's go. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.